So here you can see our cactus and I've actually made a special selection that shows exactly the ridges or the protruding part of the cactus. Another way to think about this is we did have our star from before and I am highlighting uh, the tips of that star, which are gonna turn into the ridges. And we need to do that so we can actually distribute our needle. Um, so I actually have the needle from before um, on those ridges. So let me show you how to do that. Just had to do a bit of ex an explanation so you know what we're doing. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna take all these needle nodes that we made and I'm making sure that I select all of them and I'm gonna move them off to the side. So we have the needle and we have the cactus. Uh, specifically, I wanna look at the cactus and make the uh, special selection. So if we look at this fillet curve, what I can do is I can say, let's isolate these ridges. To do that, I'm gonna look at the spline parameter. So as we go along this, I want to visualize uh, this fillet curve and we can see the spline parameter on top of it. So you can see it's going from zero to one. I wanna take this and make sure that there's one per ridge. So instead of one zero to one cycle, I want this multiplied by the number of ridges, which is, I think, the number of stars. It's either that or divided by two. So we had 32 here, which again is gonna be the number of you know ridges allegedly, uh, take this and connect it to the multiplication. And then we need to send this through a fraction. So it goes zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. And you can see it's not working. Why is it not working? It's because we need to resample the curve. Anytime we do something weird to it, like the fillet and all that, we need to resample. So I'm gonna resample the curve by a factor of, I don't know, a thousand. You can, it's not that computationally expensive, but you can see it's going from black to white, kind of. It's very subtle. Uh, 32 times, okay? So if we now take this and make it a bit more distinctive, which part is our selection? We can take a color ramp, set this to black at the endpoints and white in the uh, middle. You can now see, well, once we kind of crunch this gradient, you'll be able to see that we've uh, isolated part of this selection. I think we have twice as many as we need, which makes sense because there's ridges and valleys. So we need to divide by two to only have ridges. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna divide it by two, and it looks like it needs a bit of an offset, so I'm gonna do a bit of an addition. So something like that um, isolates these ridges. But uh, I don't just want to isolate the ridges of the star, I wanna get it for the mesh, uh, which we can view. Let me try to view it. Uh, you can see it's black, because it doesn't actually carry over that information. So what we need to do is we need to somehow capture this before it gets converted into a mesh, right? We have a curve to mesh. Uh, to do that, we need to use a capture attribute. So we have this attribute for the resampled star. We are gonna collect, uh, select that right there. This is what's gonna be sent to the curve to mesh. And now when we view this, it should exactly show the ridges of our thing. Uh, and because we did this before we applied our set position noise, it kind of flows with this kind of jagged noise thing. Um, especially you can see it's like, you know, it's dependent on our thing. Um, but the number of ridges now should not matter as long as it is a integer. So if I make it 24, uh, we're always gonna have the ridges selected, it seems. So now we've made our selection and uh, now we want to distribute our needles on top of our special selection. So let's get to that. 